There are a couple different ways to calibrate your board. Um, if you look in this area of the board right here in the upper left hand corner, there's a flame. Uh, one of the easiest ways to calibrate your board is to just hover your pen over the flame. When you hover it, the flame will change different colors and then this screen will come up. It says click the surface to begin. And then you will notice that it says please click on the cross. You will click those. This is basically telling your computer um, the dimensions of the new mouse pad. And then you will have your board will be calibrated. Generally, you will not have to calibrate your board more than um, once in a while. If you are calibrating it daily or on an uh, hour-by-hour -hour basis, you might want to get in contact, contact with somebody because something is most likely wrong. If you are sharing a room or sharing computers or using different computers on a single board, you may have to calibrate every class. There is a, one other way. You can also calibrate from the icon in the menu bar. The menu bar is this thing on top. Um, you'll see several different icons like your battery, your wireless, um, sound, sometimes your display. But there should be a little icon there that looks like a Promethean board or icon. So if you click on that, it says calibrate, and you can click that and to repeat the process. The important factor with the board is that it puts you in front of your students and it takes you away from your computer and it takes you away from your overhead projector and puts you in front of your students. Things on your screen are suddenly interactive. A PowerPoint can become interactive. Um, anything that you do on the web can become interactive. It doesn't necessarily have to just be using the software. Your computer works with the board without it. Uh, long ago I saw some research, I've been having a hard time finding it, but it was basically that if you stand by your screen and point to objects, there's an increase in student understanding versus if you stand at your overhead projector and point with your pen and see the shadow of the pen on the screen. Um, so basically what we're trying to get at here is the active boards are best practice. Um, putting you in front of your students, giving you the ability to interact, giving the students ability to interact, are ultimately where we're going. Now we're starting slow, it's going to be baby steps, there's going to be frustration, but I think in the years that you invest into this, it's going to become a very important part of your classroom. It is important to know the long term uh, where we're going with this. Um, Promethean uh, and Active Boards and Dr. Ma Bob Marzano have uh, teamed up to do some research on um, what is the um, increase in student comprehension with using Active Boards or interactive whiteboard technology. So what I wanted to do is highlight some of the tool or some of the uh, research stats so that you kind of have an idea of where we are at and then also um, highlight some tools that you could use if you were sharing information with students in a classroom. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to highlight, use the reveal tool, which is the revealer here. And what you can see is this X here. Basically what that means is that it's you didn't use the paint bucket to fill the screen black. You can see that it's actually got some function. And if you move the cursor into the different quadra qu quadrants of this screen, you can see that it changes orientation. So I can make it do different things. So uh, the first one is that there's a 17% gain in student comprehension using active board technology or interactive whiteboard technology versus classrooms without. Now it's also important to remember that this is when it's done well. Active board should ideally be used between 75 and 80% of the time for the biggest gains in student comprehension. I don't suspect that any of us will be there for quite some time. But what we need to also remember is that basically the ideal active board user is an experienced teacher. Now this is years of experience, and I believe that this category was 16 to 32 years. So there is some um, advantage here to knowing what to do and knowing your art. Uh, the other thing is using this particular technology for two years. The biggest gains come when you look back next year and you see all of 
this year's material that you can immediately start building on. So there will be some time investment this year. The other big thing is making sure that you have access to training or people that you can tap into. There's several cadres of people ahead of you as well as uh, some people that you can tap into at various buildings um, or um, Terry Oslin or me. Uh, one other thing is that there are a lot of horror stories with schools where uh, over summers they'll install 300 interactive whiteboards, they'll tear down the whiteboards and blackboards, and the teachers will show up and not even know how to turn them on. This has um, happened, uh, so uh, hopefully this staff development that we have provided for you will be um, uh, helpful. With all of these things uh, accounted for, you there can be up to a 30% gain in student achievement. What I would encourage you to do is when you get to the point where you are feeling comfortable, start asking your students what they think, and they'll tell you too. Um, this is another tool which is called the Circular Spotlight Tool, and I'm just gonna turn that off and I'll turn it back on. Uh, the Spotlight Tool. And basically what it does is you can adjust how much you want to reveal. And then you can see that there is that arrow. And however you move it, that's what shows. You can also go into these menu settings. And basically what I'd like to do is just give you, let you do it yourselves and kind of explore. But um, you can change various aspects of it. You can also even invert it. So the question here is what do we need to focus on? What do you think the answer is? Um, we'll close it and then I'll say focus on what you do best, not all the bells and whistles. Figure out a few tools. If this is what you're using for, for a couple months, that is just fine eventually will begin to build your flip charts and your mind will shift on how to make your flip charts more interactive but all that will come in time it'll be a natural progression if you're interested in seeing this hour-long keynote that dr bob marzano gave about the active boards it's, it's fairly interesting uh, but i highlighted of course all the main information for you here um, it's located here at this link